Hey, good morning, and thank you for joining us on the Tammy Tub Show. I was just about to say woman to woman, because that's what I feel like on today with Ms. Barbara. We're going to have a woman to woman talk about child abuse, life, and how we as parents need to get back on the wheel and do what God has called us to do with our children. April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and we have some women here that's going to empower you and take you to another level. So stay tuned and be blessed. Yeah, Hi, we're back with Miss Barbara Brown here from Atlanta, and I'm so grateful to God that you have transported by way from Atlanta to Mississippi. Thank you for joining me on this morning. Thank you. You know, this is a touchy subject. When you think about children, they're so innocent, mm -hmm. so pure, mm -hmm. but yet and still, as adults, we sometimes neglect them, we abuse them, or we use them for our, you know, purpose that we want them to serve us. But you have a message of how children are truly a gift from God. Share with us a little bit about that. Children are such a miracle from the time they come in. And although they are born with a personality traits, how they turn out has is environment mm -hmm. and how they're um, brought up and raised. Um, a lot of times when we have a new baby, we're so excited and just we feel so blessed and just think, all right, I'm going to do everything I can for this child. I'm just going to make sure this child has the best life. And, and then the child starts growing up and they do things we don't really like. And they're messy and they're learning. They don't know things. And we start getting impatient. No, you should know that now. Stop. Um, a lot of abuse does come from not understanding mm -hmm. what's appropriate for a child's age, not knowing um, what a child is really supposed to be doing at what stage. Um, sometimes we feel we've been spanked as a, uh, when we were children. Spanking works for our kids. Um, research after research after research shows spanking does not work. It will temporarily stop mm -hmm. uh, the behavior, but it does not do long-term change. Long-term change comes from, takes a little bit more work, mm -hmm. but it makes for happier parents and happier children. Um, and children are able to grow up to be healthy and happier. Um, we always hear about the children who were beaten to death, unfortunately, or other terrible things that happen to them. Um, part of that comes out of anger, part of mm -hmm. it comes out of ignorance, mm -hmm. and part comes out of selfishness. Placed into the microwave, infant child born, placed in a, a garbage bag, left to die, suffocate. You, know, you would think, who would do that? Mm -hmm. Why would someone do that? Yes. But I as a family life specialist, what have you learned in reference to that? Um, it just takes an act. If you feel you cannot handle your child once you have the child, there are so many agencies out there. There's so many people that want a child that mm -hmm. are praying. Um, go doctor after doctor and adoption agency after adoption agency. Instead of being selfish, take the time. Uh, take that child where it has a chance. Mm -hmm. Remember, it is um, all the science we know, we cannot create a child. Um, we cannot give the energy to a child. We can't give a child a soul. All we can do is love them. All we can do is love them. Teach them. Yes. Nurture them. And again, love them. Love them. And that's what you do with not only the children, but with the parents there, yes. the family life specialist. Tell us a little bit about, about your day-to-day -day routine. Um, my day-to-day, -day, we start off the day um, giving parents a place to temporarily bring their children for a few hours for doctor's appointments. So instead, uh, most of the families can't afford what am I going to do with my child? I have a job interview or I have a doctor's appointment. They're stressed and um, stress times lead to child abuse. Mm -hmm. So we give them a place, bring your child for a couple hours, do what you need to do or just 
take a break. Now, where are you located? We're at the Emerson Family Center on uh, South Louisville. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in the it's in an old school setting, but mm -hmm. it's a very large 1504 Louisville, and that's South in Louisville. Starkville. In Starkville, mm -hmm. Starkville, Mississippi. Yes. <sighs> but um, yeah, and then uh, during that time, we'll hold some parenting classes, and the parenting classes. Don't mean don't necessarily mean that you're an awful person or terrible person. It means maybe you just need to know a little bit more about what's appropriate. We're not born knowing how to be parents, mm -hmm. um, and the biggest thing we're teaching in our classes is both nurturing yourself and nurturing your child. Mm -hmm. um, and we believe that parents have to be have to nurture themselves to be able to give to their children. On the other hand, you can't make up for what you're lacking through your child. That's great. So. That's good. That's good stuff. I can. I mean, I'm sitting here just in awe, in all honesty. You know, after losing children, when you see people who are neglecting mm -hmm. or abusing their children, mm -hmm. it just breaks your heart even the more. I'm sure it does. And I know you have had the opportunity to work with you know, adults who have been abused, now mm -hmm. that there are adults, you may see that same pattern or they've beaten the odds. Share some mm -hmm. insight of what you've observed from that perspective. Um, a lot of young women, several young women, and especially the one that's coming on here, mm -hmm. has been so determined not to repeat the pattern. Um, and she has, has searched out information and help to find appropriate ways of dealing with um, child behavior and mm -hmm. discipline, things like that. Um, there's nothing to tell us which parents are going to repeat the violence and which ones are going to try to beat the odds mm -hmm. and change. Um, what we try to do, though, is reach out and say, hey, you don't have to do it that way. Here, we can help you. Mm -hmm. I do home visits. I'm there to support you in your home. Um, I'm there, you know, if you just need a rest from your kid, respite, bring your child for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. um, don't abuse them. We actually start off with a prenatal program, kind of teaching you basics about parenting before your baby's born. Yes. So we help you get ready. Yes, preparation. Preparation, yes. So that we truly can welcome a child in this world. Awesome, awesome. You know what, Ms. Robert? I love you <laughs> so very much. Thank We're going to take a break, but after this break, you're going to meet a very inspiring, very inspiring, determined young lady, young lady who has beat the odds in yes. regards to child abuse. And I'm so grateful that she has allowed me the opportunity to interview her. Ms. Amanda Cole will be coming next, right after this segment. Stay tuned. Bad credit? Forget it! You've just been pardoned <laughs> from past credit problems because Carlock Kia issues you Credit Amnesty! Yes, it's true. Carlock Kia wants to finance you no matter what your credit looks like. Drive any vehicle like the 2012 Kia Sorento crossover for zero down $99 a month with a huge selection to choose from. Divorce? Okay. Bankruptcy? Okay. Repo? Okay. You're approved with Credit Amnesty. Now is your chance to buy at Carlock Kia, where everybody rides. This week in the Drop Zone at Carlock Kia. Up to $5,000 off Sorrentos and Sedonas. In the Drop Zone. Up to $4,000 off Sportages and Optimus. In the Drop Zone. Up to $3,000 off Fortes. In the Drop Zone. Plus a huge selection of Rios and Souls. Carlock Kia has them all. This week in the Drop Zone. At Mississippi's number one Kia dealer. Carlock Kia. Where everybody rides. Bad credit? Forget it! You've just been pardoned <laughs> from past credit problems because Carlock Kia issues you Credit Amnesty! Yes, it's true. Carlock Kia wants to finance you no matter what your credit looks like. Drive any vehicle like the 2012 Kia Sorento crossover for zero down $99 a month with a huge selection to choose from. Divorce? Okay. Bankruptcy? Okay. Repo? Okay. You're approved with Credit Amnesty. Now is your chance to buy at Carlock Kia, where everybody rides. 
As stated earlier, April is Child Abuse Prevention Month. In an effort to help save another child's life because one out of four girls and one out of six males, boys, are actually sexually molested within each year. And on today, I have a child survivor of child abuse, Ms. Amanda Colvin. And I just want you to take a seat and relax and take inventory of your life just to see if you're really loving on your children or are you abusing them? Just some food for thought. Hello, Amanda, and thank Hello. you for joining me. Give me your hands and your fears. Peace, be still. Thank All you. is well with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. First, I want to tell you that I salute you. I thank God that you're taking a bold step so you'll be able to save somebody else's life. And for, you know, parents to kind of take inventory because as parents, we don't, you know, sometimes make the best decisions. And you know that. Share mm -hmm. some, just some little uh, step back as far as your life, as far as you can remember as age three. Well, I mean, um, cooking dinner at three. I don't, and laundry, doing laundry, dishes. I mean, a child that, I remember trying to get on the washing machine. I mean, imagine a child that saw, how do you get in there? I mean, you have to like get up there, balance, mm -hmm. get the clothes, hop down, put them in the wash. I mean, it's several times you have to do that. And I mean, just stuff like that, doing dishes. I remember climbing on the counters to get food. Wow. I mean, to get down to cook it. Mm -hmm. It's not like it was on my level. I had to get a, like get a chair, climb up on the counter, walk around on the counter to get the stuff down just so I could fix something to and eat. And that's at age three? That's at age three. How do you feel about that now as an adult? Ridiculous. I couldn't even see my son. I won't even let him near the kitchen counter. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or in the, I can't stand it. Mm -hmm. Just can't. Now I see that you're smiling, but how do you feel on the inside? Hate, but I try not to let that get to me. Mm -hmm. Because it's not right for me, because I know if I, if I feel it inside, I'm going to lash out with it. Mm -hmm. So I guess the smile hides what's inside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you were washing dishes, mm -hmm. trying to do the laundry at three. And taking care of my little brother, too, my friend. So you had a little brother. I had a little brother. How old was he? One. Mm. So are you left alone at home? Yes. That started when I don't remember my age. I know I was in school. Mm -hmm. So this is about five. Mm -hmm. So we would, I would come home from school and be left alone. And there was this one time that my mom was actually home because she was supposed to go get my brother from school because he had after school tutoring. And she was yelling at me because she didn't know where my brother was. I was like, you were supposed to go get him from school. So we had to get in the car and go get him. He was up there by himself, standing outside. And I guess the teachers just left. Oh, my. So, I mean, even adults, either other, some other adults, I mean, are just negligent, too, as well. So there was a lot of yelling, screaming, fighting. I remember one big, there were several big fights, but this is the one I remember the most because I think it was right before we moved for the first time. But we had a kitchen table that sat eight people. They had flipped that over, thrown, there were holes in the walls. Mm -hmm. And it was horrible. Mm. We just hid in the, in the bedrooms. I'm sure. You yes. probably were afraid. Very much Very afraid. afraid. And we just hid back there until they, I mean, I really don't remember what happened afterwards, but I remember hearing, I mean, those noises are horrific for a mm -hmm. child. And that was one of the worst fights that mm -hmm. they ever had that I remember anyway. My goodness. Yeah. Now that you're a mom, what do you tell yourself I will never do? That is one thing I will never do. I will never make him that scared that he has to go hide in the closet and cry. And I'm not going to be like them. And I try to keep his, I want him to, to know his grandparents, but I have to limit that interaction mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. But they don't treat him the way they treated me, which also it makes me happy that they're not going to treat him that way. But it, you know, it's just a little like you couldn't be this way with me, you know? Mm hmm what about food in the home for you? Was there food there provided for you or were you? When I was younger, mm -hmm. it was food to cook, mm -hmm. not food you could just like eat, you know. And when we got older, we, my parents didn't have money problems and we did get to the point where there was no food in the house. Mm -hmm. But we had, my uncle, he, he bought food for us and stocked up the shelves and stuff. Now there was a time you shared in regards to going to a restaurant 
Oh yes, this was that was when I was older. I was in the sixth or seventh grade, mm -hmm. and it was spring break last day. I think it was a Friday, and me and my brother had been inside all the, the whole week. We had been inside, and they decided we we went outside. Decided to go outside and play. You know, we weren't allowed to go outside and play if nobody was home. But we mm -hmm. went outside anyway. So we went outside, and our neighbor was watching us. And I we were out there for like five minutes, and they pulled up in the truck. And they came home, you know, we ran inside, but I mean, obviously we were caught. So when they got inside, they decided to tell us that they were going to take us to all these places. But now they're not taking us anywhere. And we had to go with them out to eat to watch them eat lobster. And we had to sit there and eat nothing. It was so much fun. Oh, my. Yeah. So just sit there. Just sit there. Painful memories. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with it? Don't think about it because for a while, when I was like 16, 17, I had started, you know, getting a job and all that stuff. And I pretty much let those, those feelings rule my life and it started to make some bad decisions. And I made the choice when I was about almost 17 to switch it around. I wasn't going to be that person. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure it could, I could have led myself down to drug abuse or, I mean, any of those kind of places. And I decided that I wasn't going to be that way anymore. I was going to let it just, I guess bury it deep inside myself mm -hmm. and try to get out of that house and away from it. Mm -hmm. And you did that because you're yes. not originally from Mississippi. No, I'm not. So. Wow. Well, we definitely um, salute you. And I'm so grateful that you're being a blessing to your child and um, raising him with morals, values, and loving on him instead of abusing him. I know you said earlier that you couldn't imagine trying mm -hmm. to see him washing dishes or, mm -mm. you know, just being in an adult situation as a young kid. I really couldn't. Anything else you want to share with us in regards to just the, the neglect more so of what you endured as a child? I think it's, I mean, just the whole being alone by yourself. I don't think it's right for you to leave one child. Just because you have two kids, you don't need to leave one child just because the child's older in charge of the other one. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, my grades suffered. I had to drop out of high school because my grades were so bad. That I don't even know how I got through the lower grades. So, I mean, I would come home from school and I'd be, I'd be taking care of him. Wow. And it's not your responsibility. It's not, it's not your, your children's responsibility to take care of the other children. I'm sorry. It's just not. Amen. I, I salute you. Often I tell women that they are woman to woman divas. You are, Amanda. And, and that diva stands for determined, intelligent, victorious, anointed woman of God. Yes, you are. Thank, thank you. you so much for sharing your story. We love you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, guess what? Miss Barbara Brown is going to join us next of just ways of how you can turn it around, how you can empower your children, speak life into them instead of neglecting them, loving them, and making them go forward into the things of God. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. in the drop zone at Carlock Kia. Up to $5,000 off Sorrentos and Sedonas. In a drop zone. Up to $4,000 off Sportages and Optimus. In a drop zone. Up to $3,000 off Fortes. In a drop zone. Plus a huge selection of Rios and Souls. Carlock Kia has them all. This week in the drop zone at Mississippi's number one Kia dealer. Carlock Kia, where everybody rides. Bad credit? Forget it! You've just been pardoned <laughs> from past credit problems because Carlock Kia issues you Credit Amnesty! Yes, it's true. Carlock Kia wants to finance you no matter what your credit looks like. Drive any vehicle like the 2012 Kia Sorento crossover for zero down, $99 a month with a huge selection to choose from. Divorce? Okay. Bankruptcy? Okay. Repo? Okay. You're approved with Credit Amnesty. Now is your chance to buy at Carlock Kia, where everybody rides. This week in the Drop Zone at Carlock Kia. Up to $5,000 off Sorrentos and Sedonas. In a Drop Zone. Up to $4,000 off Sportages and Optimus. In a Drop Zone. Up to $3,000 off Fortes. In a Drop Zone. Plus a huge selection of Rios and Souls. Carlock Kia has them all. This week in the Drop Zone at Mississippi's number one Kia dealer. Carlock Kia, where everybody rides. 
right, we're back as we're talking to Ms. Barbara Brown, uh, Family Life Specialist in regards to child abuse prevention. Tell us, what are some types of child abuse? There are some types that we don't think about. Um, one that we may not be as concerned about but can cause as much problems is neglect. Mm -hmm. um, a child not getting enough to eat, a child not being properly taken care of, getting bathed regularly, um, getting love, mm -hmm. um, and that type of child um, will be very disorganized, grows up to be very disorganized and uh, not, not so um, healthy. Mm -hmm. But neglect is one, emotional abuse is the other. Mm -hmm. uh, adults sometimes just have a habit, they get mad and they say things. And they walk off and forget they said them. Well, the child's not forgetting that you just called them stupid and crazy and, and dumb. Uh, they're they're going to remember that. Mm -hmm. And those kind of scarrings can be almost as bad as the physical abuse. Um, physical abuse, although spanking is still legal, um, statistics are, it does not work, only stops the immediate, but it does not stop long-term behavior. Spanking out of anger, if you do decide you're going to use spanking, take deep breaths. Never spank your child in a fit of anger. Um, that can leave lasting scarring, it can lead to break, broken bones. Of course, we know the horrible physical abuse that can happen. Um, a child with broken arms, bruises all over their bodies, and then sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. And we're all most horrified by the sexual abuse when a child is used for purposes they're not meant to be. Mm -hmm. um, and one in four one in four girls will be sexually abused by the time they're 18, and one in six boys. Mm -hmm. So they are at risk. Um, it is not just sometimes a parent either doesn't think or doesn't care. You know, we're kind. We say most of the time it, it's they don't know better. Mm -hmm. In a lot of cases, that's true. But when it goes beyond that, it takes the community to stomp it out. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't just happen in poverty. It doesn't happen in the projects. You can live in million dollar plus homes. Children are neglected. Children are physically abused. And children are sexually abused. Mm -hmm. um, it's there. Uh, we need to open our eyes and help stomp it out. The, the, I think Penn State we can uh, learn a big lesson from. Um, how many people did that fall through the cracks? All those boys. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll ever know the full extent. Mm -hmm. Janitors were aware. Um, Coach Paterno, his whole life, all his reputation is ruined because he wasn't, he did not step up and mm -hmm. finish what he should have done. If a child is at risk, it takes each one of us mm -hmm. uh, to step up and do something. You know, don't be afraid. There are um, reporting hotlines, mm -hmm. uh, and you don't even have to leave your name. But don't be afraid to speak up. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to get involved. Um, make sure anywhere your child goes, you know the people. Mm -hmm. um, sexual abuse of children mostly happens with people you know. Yes. Within families uh, and then with people you know. It is not strangers. The stranger abduction is a very minor part of it. Mm -hmm. um, be aware. So is it significant as a parent that we listen to our children when they speak? Yes. Create, create that closeness early. And be aware. If your child says, you know, Oh, somebody touched me. Take it seriously. Um, but stay calm. Mm -hmm. The way you react is going to affect how the child internalizes it. Um, listen to your child. Be aware. Um, 
I think the most important thing is just the warning signs. The warning signs. The yes. war there are several warning signs, even if you are not knowledgeable, warning signs that children get um, definitely yes. in the school system. Yes, in the school system, um, they act out, they may act out in a sexually suggestive manner mm -hmm. that's not age appropriate. They may get very belligerent. Or on the other hand, they may curl up and... Um, and some shut down. Some shut down, totally. Mm -hmm. um, physical signs are not necessarily there. Mm -hmm. um, we have to warn our children, make them aware of their bodies, make them aware, call it by the right name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no pee pee. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, let them know what the right name are and tell them that that's theirs, it's special, and it's we honor our bodies. Now, we've talked a lot about the warning signs. What would you say to parents right now who are saying, oh, I leave my children alone all the time? What would you say to them right now? Think how you would feel if a fire broke out. Mm -hmm. um, there are cases where people come to the house and they pretend to be somebody else and they get in and harm your children. How would you live with the guilt the rest of your life mm -hmm. if something happened to that child? Um, there is no way to make up for that. You only get one time to raise your children. One time. That's one of my favorite sayings. No parent is perfect. Right. We're going to make mistakes. Yes. But when resources are available, mm -hmm. when programs are um, being yes. presented, such as this one, we have to take inventory. Mm -hmm. Most definitely, reach out for help mm -hmm. and move forward. We all make mistakes. We do make mistakes. There is not a perfect parent. There's not a perfect person. No. And as Amanda, you know, just listening to her testimony, one of the things that she said, you know, that, you know, there's hate there. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of adults who have been sexually um, abused, molested, raped, battered by, wounded by parents. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they cannot love. They don't feel loved. Mm -mm. No. And the emotional abuse is going to create the same type of thing. They're not going to be a, a, able to love. And if you are not able to love and care for other people, we don't care for our environment. Mm -hmm. We don't care for animals. Mm -hmm. um, we don't care for anyone. Or anyone. Well, and we I don't pray. respect ourselves. I love that. We don't respect ourselves. We don't know the value of our worth. Right. Well, I pray that you all have been so blessed by this program. The 800 number is on the screen as far as a hotline that you can call to reach out. Resources are available. Ms. Barbara Brown will be available yes. um, at Emerson Family Life Center if you just need to drop your children off. This is the time when you take inventory of your life to see have you been abusing your children or really loving them. Children are a gift from God. And we have to reschedule, prioritize, and put them at the top of our list instead of at the lower level of our list. Well, my time is up. If you have been molested by any means, raped, or just in an abusive relationship, or as a child, it's time for you to walk in forgiveness and love yourself. I love you so very much. I'll see you next time on the Tammy Tub Show. Remember, always kiss your child before you leave them in the morning or they leave you. You are not guaranteed to see them again.